We now turn our attention to a health team six topic, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, also known as EDS. It occurs when people who have a defect in their connective tissue that provides support to many body parts, such as the skin, muscles, blood vessels, and other organs. Here to tell us more is a neurosurgeon and EDS specialist, uh, Dr. Fraser Henderson, senior, and patient Kristen Means, who has EDS and shares her personal story. Great to see you, folks. Thank you so nice much for coming you. in. Thank you. Ryan. Well, tell us. Uh, Kristen, about EDS, and when were you diagnosed, and how did you know? I was just diagnosed last year with EDS, and it took me 10 years to hunt for answers to receive my diagnosis. I had chronic debilitating pain, chronic headaches, and I received misdiagnosis after misdiagnosis until I finally met Dr. Henderson and a team of doctors who finally gave me hope and gave me a second chance at life. Well, Kristen, tell us, what are some of the symptoms of EDS? Uh, widespread pain throughout your body, um, joint pain, flexibility, hy being hypermobile is a symptom of EDS. I can, I can bend my fingers way back. And, and, and no, I notice with, with your fingers right here, Kristen, you, the, this is not jewelry, right? This is not jewelry. What, what is this right that we see right here? These are splints, so they hold my, my joints in place. So my fingers can't go back past the, where the ring holds me. And if you were not wearing these, what, was, what would happen? I would pop in and out of place. My dislocate, but I call it pop. So I would pop it in and out of place and get a lot of pain from it when I do that. Something as simple as putting a shoe on can do it for me. Doctor, tell us how widespread is EDS and why is it so misdiagnosed and why did it take 10 years for Kristen to get diagnosed? Mm, that's a great question. When I was in medical school, we were told that Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome was 1 in 20,000 people. Uh, about five years ago, it was generally recognized that it was more like 1 in 5,000. But now we're finding that it's much more common than that. Uh, in fact, one in ten people in this country have hypermobility connective tissue disorders. One in ten. Now, no one knows what percentage of that 30 million people have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. But many of these people sort of share the same panoply of symptoms and, and pain, suffering, chronic fatigue. This is a disorder about which very few people uh, know anything. And, and those of us who are working with this disorder feel like we're on the, on the forefront of something and we are finding new things every day. It's, it's just um, somehow this has missed uh, medical attention. What is the treatment for EDS? And it, is there a treatment? Yeah. Well, the first treatment is diagnosis. You've got to diagnose the underlying condition. If you don't understand that a patient has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, then you won't understand why they have anxiety and irritable bowel and chronically subluxing mm -hmm. ligaments, why they're injury prone, why they're depressed, fatigued. Uh, as a group of people, uh, she's very characteristic. They are very attractive, very intelligent, very athletic. She, she was a star athlete, mm -hmm. straight A's in college. And I see that again and again in my EDS patients. But they have this, this wide variety of symptoms. And typically, they've been to 10, 20, 30 doctors in different specialties. And every, every doctor is looking at their own specific right. organ system. And no one puts it all together. Kristen, it's got to be so frustrating for a, a, a patient or a person that's out there that might have some of these symptoms that are showing that you didn't give up because you kept going to a doctor that diagnosed it correctly. What's your message for somebody out there like that? To not give up.